So if you want to scan slides, negatives, photos in the year 2021, um, then you have no other chance than buying an Epson product. This was different a few years ago when Canon led the market, but unfortunately um, the Canon Canoscan 9000F Mark II isn't manufactured anymore and so Epson took over that position in the market. And um, today I want to show you how this thing works. Um, somehow all the manufacturers still don't have any videos showing us how to insert slides, how to insert pictures, how to insert film. Um, you don't find any material on their websites. Um, but I think most people ask how is this workflow handled and um, how can I use this, this device. We will have a look at the Perfection V600 which is in my opinion um, the best mix from quality and price. And um, you can um, also get an impression on how the other models work. The V500 series or V800 series, they don't differ uh, really much. Uh, I really like the V600. It is 350 euro. Uh, it's, it's a great uh, value. Um, it works best uh, for, photography, for scanning photographies. Um, if you want to go to the higher models such as the V850, um, you only have a, a, an advantage in the images you scan in one batch. Um, so I would always go for the V600. You find an affiliate link to this one underneath the video in the video description and in the first comment. Um, if you want to buy it, um, I would be happy if you use my link so I get a percentage, a commission of, your, uh, of the things you buy. So I'll buy a Porsche for that or two. And um, so let's, let's get to the workflow with the V600. Well, you can imagine scanning photos printed on paper is quite easy. You open the lid, you place them with the face down on the scanner, close the lid and then you start scanning. We will have a look at scanning later. But the more interesting question is how to digitalize, for example, old negatives, framed slides or even old film rolls. And for this purpose, Epson um, provided us with two plastic inlays um, which we can use to mount and guide the media. We can use it for slides, we can use it for negatives and we also have one for the old film rolls um, which is basically the same, uh, the same procedure, inserting a film roll, um, then closing this lid here and placing all this thing into the scanner. Um, I can't show you how to scan film rolls because I don't have any film rolls, um, but we will now have a look on how to scan negatives or slides. So first I want to show you how to insert negatives into the scanner. Um, therefore we take out this uh, closure lid, then we take our neg negative and we insert it. When inserting you find numbers here showing an upside down negative uh, with numbers and orientation. Um, you need to provide um, those negatives in the same orientation as these numbers are. This can quite be a little bit tricky but um, you can see for example the name of the manufacturer of the film or of the negative which is Kodak here. So I will insert this, um, this negative here so that I can't read Kodak from left to right but from right to left and invert it um, just as the numbers are here. For example I insert the first negatives here. I will insert the second negatives here, in this case it's aqua and I insert them in the opposite direction reading aqua. Now we take this lid here, insert it and press it down and so we have framed our negatives for scanning. Other than scanning photos, um, when scanning uh, transparent media like film rolls, negatives and slides, you need to eject this back plate so that the light will fall through from this appliance, through the dia, through the slide, through the film roll onto the imaging unit. Just as a quick demo I'll show you how to insert uh, film rolls. You open this lid over here, insert your film rolls, close the lid and then you put this one into the scanner in the B position. If for example now you want to scan the negatives then you see that the negatives are marked with A. So setup A is required for scanning uh, negatives. So you turn this around so that you can read the A 
and you find uh, three dots here, A, B and C. And for scanning negatives you can insert this here, it fits directly into the A slot here and from now on you're good to go to scan your negatives with the light unit over here. Same procedure would be applicable if you want to um, scan slides for example. You see slides are marked with a C, you turn it around so that you can read it, then this guiding rail fits into the C mark here, so this is perfectly on the, on the scanner. Now you take your slides and you put them in, you close the scanner and you would be ready to scan your slides. So as we have now inserted the slides into the scanner, I want to show you an example on how to scan with the software Epson provides us. It's nearly the same for everything, um, no matter with photos, slides, negatives, whatever. Um, but I'll show you now my settings for scanning slides as an example. Um, first of all, we open the Epson Scan 2 software. And it's a very light interface here. Um, I have the scanner Epson Perfection V600 selected. Um, the scan settings I set to phot photograph um, and uh, I'll overtake most of the preferences behind this photograph scan setting. Uh, the mode is of course photo mode, um, which for example can be switched to document mode, but I don't want to digitalize documents. So I want to use photos instead. Um, now we are in the main settings and we can say the document source, scanner glass, for example when scanning photos, or transparency unit with the light which is sent through the media, which is in case correct when scanning slides, negatives and film rolls, for example. Now I have to select the document type, and the document type in this, uh, in this um, um, case for slides is color positive film. Um, you can also set it to color negative film for negatives, for example, or to black and white negative film when you have inserted film rolls uh, with, this, uh, with this unit over here. So I'll set it to color positive film for slides now. As an image type, I use 24 bits color, which is enough for me and keeps the, the file size small. And um, the resolution I choose, it depends on how important the photo is for me. If I'm digitalizing photos from my grand-grand-grandparents, I don't have the, um, the connection to it so much, so I scan it with 2400 dp, uh, dpi um, dots per inch. Uh, when scanning uh, the children's photos of my father, for example, then I'm using 4800. Um, you can go up to 12800, but to be honest, um, I, I don't think there is any photo in the world which is so, is so important, because the higher you choose this value, the longer the scanning uh, takes, and even with 4800 uh, scanning four slides, it takes about five minutes or so. So I want to be done with this some someday, and I don't have time for scanning with higher values than 4800. Which is more important for quality concerns is the scanning quality set to high, and also the image format. I use JPEG for smaller um, for smaller file sizes, but um, you have to go to the, um, to the options, um, nevertheless. You can scan to PNG, TIFF, Multi-TIFF or PDF and you can go to the option menu, which I will do for JPEG now. And first of all, I set the image quality to 1000 and the encoding to standard. So um, this um, ensures best JPEG quality. So I'll go to OK here. Now we can change to the advanced settings. There are some interesting things as well. Um, you can uh, control brightness, contrast, saturations per photo after preview, um, but to the general settings over here, um, uh, to, to unsharp something, you can use a mask for that. I'll set it to off. I don't want this to, to correct anything on my photos, except for color restoration which is nice when you have photos that have a, a certain color degree like reddish or greenish colors. Um, this works good. The backlight correction I set to middle because backlight is used by the transparency unit and it might, if you don't use it, your uh, photos might lose details in the lights or in the shadows. And for this not to happen I set this backlight correction to middle. 
Um, dust removal, I also use middle. Dust removal is pretty cool. This scanner has a technology that is called ICE and as far as I understood this technique, um, the scanner does a second scan with infrared and finds um, dust or scratches on media. And um, later the scanner subtracts these um, damages from the image uh, via the ICE technology. So I use the dust removal with middle. Something I don't use is grain reduction. Um, which reduces grain and noise from your um, from your photos. Um, in some cases, I experience bad image quality um, because not bad image quality, but um, it it wants to correct areas of the image where it finds grain and it makes them look mm, not natural. In some cases, but um, I, I don't use it. Um, but you can you can use it to your to your own discretion. Um, I set it to off. So if we have now done the settings, we are able to save these so that we don't have to um, that we don't have to recall them every time we start the software again. Um, and now we can start with a preview. The scanner starts scanning a preview of all the images from the slides I inserted, and on purpose I um, put one image with wrong orientation into the scanner so that you can see that it is very easy to correct such mistakes without having to. Um, having to correct uh, the, the slide in the scanner. So we wait for the preview progress now and here you see um, the, the four slides I inserted and you see that this orientation is wrong. So I just click on this image and I change the orientation. Um, I click on this image with the boat and change the orientation. Oh, too much. So now it's correct and I can make individual settings for each um, for each of these um, yeah, um, slides here. Um, this is the thumbnail view. I can switch to another view. Um, yes, for example, when you scan negatives and you have very dark negatives, for example, then the system wouldn't acknowledge them. Then you can just take this cursor and say, okay, here is another one. Uh, scan this area, please. But I'm not doing this now. So I just want to use these the scanner found which are which are okay and now we can go to scan. As I mentioned before, scanning takes quite a time um, because uh, with 4800 dpis you can expect about uh, one and a half minutes per image and it takes some time. So I hope with this video I could give you an impression on how this scanner works, on how the workflow works, on what to do with the different media types, on how to use the software so that you get an impression how it really feels, how it looks, uh, how it's, how it's uh, controlled. Um, if so, I would be very happy if you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up on this video. Normally I'll provide you with other videos uh, regarding photography, smart home, IT and, and technical stuff. And um, so I, I hope you have fun with your new Epson scanner. You find a link to it in the video description and a comment below. And uh, yeah, see you soon.